pictures were either um, in central London, usually off Oxford Street, um, and uh, locally around North Devon, and uh, trying to put a bag around that lot <laughs> in a few words was quite difficult. So it was Uptown and Down West was, was last year's title, and this is just more of the same. Various people have said, oh, well, you know, why don't you put them in, in, in sort of bracketed lots, you know, put, put the flowers together, put, put the beach scenes together, put the London street life together. Uh, my feeling is that if you've got a row of 10 flower pictures and as a viewer you come along and you look at them and you don't like flowers, you tend to just sort of drift off and think, is the rest of the exhibition going to be like this? Uh, so, uh, I suppose it's a process that I had, as a, you know, when editing uh, my dramas there. You want to continually stimulate your audience in some way. S uh, you know, you don't want them to think, oh, this is the way this is going. You want to just be one step ahead of them all the time. And, and so these are put together intending people to to suddenly have to sort of refresh each time they move to the next picture um, because it's something pretty radically different from the one before. And uh, I, I just think people are likely to judge it with, with uh, more sense than they might if, if they thought they knew where the pictures were going. There's no way I would craft anything before I went out. And did it. My kind of photography is very spontaneous and grabbing what I see. Um, and the digital thing facilitates that. As the maker of these images, you have no idea what the person looking at those images is going to bring to bear on them. They will stimulate memories of things and that is going to be at least 50% of what you, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the image that they're looking at is what they're bringing to it. There's a picture there of a, a, a forgotten bicycle that, that, that a tree has grown through it and that, you know, just bicycles will everybody will have different feelings about them. There's a picture of a gorilla in, in London Zoo there. That's going to awaken all sorts of thoughts. I, I do tend to choose the, uh, whether it's black and white bef beforehand. Um, and I'm, I'm a great lover of the black and white because it, it does seem to focus the mind uh, of what you get out of a picture. Often something in colour, you, you kind of go, oh yeah, but the black and white just, just makes you look that much harder. Whether you're questioning why it's in black and white or whether it's a, a period thing, I don't know. I don't think I could choose between the two because they, I care about them equally. Um, the thing about landscape is in pretty well every one of them, there is a person or a creature in it because without that life within them, they become like kind of picture postcards to me. Um, and it, and it, is, it is the, the the living thing within them that, that, that is, makes the picture. But it also takes the art, you know, your, your eye goes to that thing, whether, whether you're aware of it or not, I think it's a different matter, but somehow the, you, one's natural bit is to find a person anywhere. Um, and if you, unless there is something living and, and frozen in time there, your eye is sort of, meandering about the frame so you know essentially there's not a big difference between the the uh, the, the close-up portraits 
on the, on the big landscapes, I think.